All right, guys. So in this recording, we are going to talk about classical conditioning. And we're going to start with these important words. So an unconditioned stimulus, a con unconditioned response, a conditioned stimulus, and a conditioned response, and then neutral. So unconditioned, when you hear the word unconditioned, what I want you to think is something that is un learned. No one had to teach it to you. This is something that naturally happens in humans or other animals. Unconditioned response, you should hear the same thing, an unlearned response that no one had to teach you. When you hear the word conditioned, I want you to think, oh, this had to be learned. So this person had to learn this or this animal had to learn this over time. When you hear conditioned response, right, you had to learn. Learning had to take place. And neutral means exactly what it sounds like. There was no learning yet. We're just trying to see if we can pair it. So with the famous Pavlov example, Pavlov takes the unconditioned stimulus, so unlearned, which is the food or the meat powder. When you present meat powder to a dog or you present a human with food, their mouth salivates or creates saliva so that they can digest the food. That is a natural thing. No one has to teach it to you. You just do it. What he started to do was pair the food, which is a stimulus, it's a thing that he presented to an organism, he paired that food with the sound of the bell. And over time, the dog began to salivate at the bell. The bell is the conditioned stimulus because you have to learn to salivate to a bell. The unconditioned stimulus is the food because no one teaches you to salivate to that. And the response is what the organism, the animal, or the person does. So when you salivate to food, that's unconditioned because you did not have to be trained to do that. If you start salivating to bells, someone had to train you to do that, so that's conditioned. If you need another example, think about, you can see this everywhere in your life, but I'm going to give you a couple examples to kind of get the wheels turning. So if you have a cat, right? and you feed your cat dry cat food out of like a bag, you will notice that a cat, when they hear the crinkling of a bag, they will come from anywhere to get food. A cat in the wild does not respond to the crinkling of the bag, okay? You have taught that cat that the bag crinkling means that food is available. So in that scenario, food would be the unconditioned stimulus. When you present food, all cats run. That's the unconditioned response. And what would be the conditioned stimulus? What did you teach the cat? Think about your answer. It would be the bag of food, right? The conditioned stimulus, you taught the cat over time that the bag of food is, is like the bag, the actual bag, not the food itself, but the actual bag means that food is going to be available really soon. And there are so many examples of things that you have learned to associate in your mind over time. So most of us associate um, certain colors or words or shapes of words with certain foods. And even if we're not hungry, if we see those things, then we become hungry or we have an appetite. We've learned to associate them over time. Okay, so that's this basic concept. Let's keep going. This is the experiment. Um, it is written out here. I've talked about it and I've also attached another video that I encourage you to watch because it's good to hear it more than once. So what is higher order conditioning? That's essentially that we can associate a whole string of things. So when they talk about a dog, right, a dog starts to associate or a cat or any animal, they can associate all sorts of noises. So if you think about your cat, they can associate where you keep the food. So that noise, they can associate the bag and then finally the food. And we do this as human beings. We make all these chains of things that we like associate with one another. And when we see one, it has, we have the same effect as if we would have saw another one. 